Welcome back to the final clash on Summoner's Rift for All-Stars 2018. I'm Clayton Captain Flowers Reigns, joining Jat and Vettius for this LCK versus LPL grudge match. Let's go ahead and jump right into the starting rosters here, playing for the LPL on the blue side. We've got Godlike in the top lane, MLXG in the jungle, Rookie at mid, Uzi bottom lane, and Chetzo at support. Really star-studded roster when you think about it. Godlike, Uzi's old teammate from the 2013 World Finals. And also on the red side of his career, we got Watch in the top lane, Peen in the jungle, Faker in mid, Bang in bot with Mad Life, the support of all supports. So many big names from both past and present on both these rosters. I'm really looking forward to this one. I've been looking forward to this since the event started. Yeah, I think that this is a really exciting one. And uh, to me, what makes it slightly more compelling than the NAEU one that we had is our pros are in their lanes. Right, because in NAEU yeah. we had like 80 carries playing in mid, and we had Minnaners playing 80 carries. This time you've got Rookie versus Faker, you've got MLXG versus Peanut, and you've got Bang versus Uzi, which is always an exciting one to see. Yeah, and Watch as well, a former jungler, but also still a very high ELO player up against Godlike, who also is retired. That's the one that's not fully on roll, but I totally agree with you. Like seeing Faker, Uzi, Bang all in their element, and also to see if Mad Life still has some of those highlight plays up his sleeve. I wonder if he will look in the Thresh. I, <laughs> I hope so. I want to see it. Both these guys were known for their Thresh. I mean, Mad Life was the guy who made supporting cool back when support was not a very cool thing in the opinions <laughs> of the majority of the League of Legends player base, so. I mean, he was someone who is considered one, or I mean, the best player at the world, of the world in that time period, right? Yeah. He was just so good. And he had, he was one of the first people to have a, a move named after him. The ability to predict where someone was going to go and then landing the hook in advance was just, it's so impressive to see him now back in a competitive environment. I mean, even these days, whenever you see somebody make that prediction of like, oh, I know he's going to flash, I'll aim where the flash is and then pull him, that still blows everybody's minds. Yep. But back in the day, before everything had evolved to the point that it is now in League of Legends, back in the day when the first insect was just, holy cow, I'm throwing the table, that was incredible. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was even more so. So this guy, a blast from the past. I hope he's got his time machine in full gear and can bring us back to some of those glory days. I yeah, absolutely so. agree. I can't, watch, I can't wait to watch Rookie and Faker as well, especially uh, seeing the upsets we had mm -hmm. in the 1v1, knowing that Faker's not in there, Bang's not in there, Uzi's not in there. This is really the last hurrah of yeah. this competitive season, it really feels like, until yeah. 2019. So I I'm hoping that we get to see a little bit more comfort on the champions that are seen picked. It is fun to watch the East versus West that we saw earlier with everyone off roll and playing a lot of weird stuff, but yeah. with players this good, yep. right? Like, I'm just hungry for some competition. I'm expecting this to be a very focused game. You know, we've seen a lot of uh, people picking comfort, people picking uh, wacky stuff, but I just expect both these teams to take this very seriously. They're going to try their best. They're going to pick champions that they can succeed on. And and as you mentioned, Jet, the only people that are really off roll are the, the two players up in the top lane, Watch going up against God. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, but even then, I just think that it's going to be exciting. We're going to have some very high quality League of Legends, and it's going to be on the brand new patch of 8.24 as well. Will Nico be a priority? We haven't really seen her being banned or prioritized mm. in a lot of the drafts that have been coming out recently. Uh, will we still see Karthus coming out as a high priority pick? I think there's a lot of cool stuff to look forward to. And that's always one of the fun parts about these off-season style tournaments is sort of getting that sneak peek into what could be the meta or the standard going into that next season because if you're going to get a sneak peek, you might as well get it with the guys that you expect to be at the top level of skill throughout that entire next season. Anyway, Faker versus, versus Rookie, like you said earlier, shaping up to be one of those hopeful clash of the titans yeah. as the next season comes up and goes forward because that's going to be one that a lot of people are already in different camps as to saying, oh yeah, Faker's the greatest of all time. Mm -hmm. Faker's the best. Faker will never fall. And you've got the new people saying, no, 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 the age of Faker is done. The age of Rookie has come. Let's see who's right. Yeah, he, well, he's the defending world champion, but SKT and Faker have geared up for the new season. Right? Oh, yeah. They've completely rebuilt SK Telecom with Bang coming to NA, getting Teddy in as the AD carry, Khan as a top laner, a couple of jungers they can throw in there, one of them actually coming from the fourth place LPL team as well. So uh, there's so much to look forward to in 2019, and I'm just yeah. hoping this is a good capper to the 2018 season. I mean, 
SKT pretty much just set themselves up for the redemption arc with mm -hmm. this year, right? You can't mm -hmm. have the redemption arc unless you have the unless falter have the arc beforehand. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to have the fall before you can have the much more incredible rise, and we'll see if they can make that happen in the upcoming year. But first off, they got to get through this showdown up against the representatives from the LPL. And all right, Vettius, what is the number one pick you're hoping to see in this one? If you could, Nico. If Nico you could pick has anything, to be okay, it. the Nico. Rookie or Faker with Nico in their hands, I think would be really exciting to see. It would almost set the benchmark for how this champion should be played, could be played. Uh, I think mm. that it would be a very big pick. And obviously with LPL being on the blue side, they would have priority over it. <laughs> we say this is going to be a very <laughs> Garen bad. Bad. Garen is bad. Garen's bad. <laughs> it just means they want to let the highlight champions have their day, but it's <laughs> making be. sure that every possible highlight champ is available. Jat, are you telling me that pressing Q, clicking on your opponent, and then spinning in a circle multiple times is not the definition of mechanical talent? He's just not the highlight champ, is all I'm saying. You can be a I'm good just wondering, when Godlike was playing in pro play, maybe Garen was the go-to <laughs> top laner at the time, and he's like, whoa, this isn't still Get rid of this. Yeah, you've got to take this off the board. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> All right, let's see what we get from everybody else. The Lucian banned out by the LCK squad. They want to keep that one out of the hands of Uzi. Uzi, of course, this player that we all know, you invest a lot of resources into a guy like that, and he is going to make some moves happen, especially with a stylish champion like Lucian. So getting rid of that makes a lot of sense. Camille now banned out by the LPL squad. Yeah, so the rest of the bands are looking a lot better, unless maybe maybe we're missing something about watches, Garen, and solo queue or something, because the rest, of, and then the heat band. Oh, man. <laughs> so I thought maybe they were played in like, row before, Vetti. Uh, I was like, maybe they're trying to spell LPL, LCK. There's no G in LPL. No. Uh, there's no P in LCK. Unfortunately so. not. <laughs> <laughs> but this was the champion we were talking about, Nico. Uh, I'm hoping that it's in the hands of Rookie. It still has a lot of flexibility options. We're on Night Blue playing it in the jungle on day one. We've seen it a lot in the 1v1s. Mm -hmm. um, but could potentially still be flexed into a bunch of different roles. Well, at least LCK did ban LPL as their ban, so we can make some that's sort of sense that's, that's, that's right. Yeah. Yes. But LPL, just uh, I don't exactly know what the GCM is, yeah. but whoever they are, they're not welcome I to this mean, game. I mean, it also depends what language your client is set to, the way it, it filters the champion. <laughs> so true. Uh, that's why Faker always has the same bans every time he would play in solo queue. But here we go. Looking like... <laughs> the good picks. All right. Give we, me that jungle twitch. We've already got the Nico picked up for the LPL, as you said. It's Kaisa locked in for the side on the LCK. And what else do they want to go with it here? Cycling through a couple of them. The Karma locked Karma. in. Karma. Okay. Could be mid. Wow. Insta lock Aatrox as well. Uh, so I think. We're, oh, oh. We also get the thrash taken away. Oh, from that yeah. Life. Listen. If you're ever a pro support, you're known for some Thresh plays, and J Jay Zhao has played some great Thresh games. Takes it away from Mad Life, so the denial right there. He was a Thresh player in his own right as well, yeah. so you're not just stealing it away, you're picking up a weapon that you're used to using. I am personally disappointed in not seeing it, but understand. Speaking of secret weapons, the secret weapon gonna be locked in on the side of the LCK. Zach in the jungle, the long range engage picked up for this team. Uh, I remember Zach being one of Peanut's kind of secret go-to junglers during this year. It was something that he found a lot of success on during the regular season, and uh, often he would kind of default back to it when they needed something to kind of shift those bests off up during the regular season. Uh, it looks like that it will be going in his hands, but there is the possibility of flexing it to the top lane as well. So far, LCK have drafted very much a composition around enabling their AD carry bang on the Kai'Sa, a little bit yeah. more towards that scaling option. The Karma can be flexed to both mid and support, depending on what they're looking at, unless we're going towards one of those infamous Karma top lanes. Well, the LCK will ban out the C and the K from LCK in their second part of the bans as <laughs> yes, well. They They're will. really targeting <laughs> these tricodes here as the Orianna and the Jax banned out by the LPL team as now the LCK will make their next pick. They're hovering over the Rengar and that one's locked in. Oh my. So. Top lane Rengar? It could be a top lane Rengar for Watch seeing as he has been a jungle main in the past. That's what I got, Betty. Uh, that's, 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 that's all right. Got, that's got, a period, take, not a comma. Take it from there. Uh, <laughs> um, I reckon, I just feel like Peanut would be the one that's more inclined to play the Rengar. 
Uh, Zach Top? And then Zach Top. Yeah. I mean, do you remember the days of Zach Top? I when do, it was... when he was like a totally different champ. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very different. I remember the days of the Ooh. style of this gotcha. But it, now it looks like it's actually an Aatrox Point in the click. mid lane. <laughs> it's Aatrox in the mid, Nico in the jungle, Sion in the top lane. Remember, you can still flex the Sion and what the Aatrox. Aatrox I think what if it's Aatrox, jungle, Nico mid, Sion top? I think it's Aatrox in the jungle with Aftershock. Ooh, ooh, what if we see the Uzi Yasuo in the bot lane as well? Do it. Yeah. Because I heard that in solo queue, his, his Yasuo is not that good. <laughs> well, <laughs> at All Star, it's been great. Oh. Such a way for But wait. Wait, there's a lot of communication going on right now. Being like, what? why do I have Valzar? I you already had Nico. Like, wait, who's just going to play what? <laughs> why right. did you pick Valzar? <laughs> Couple thinking emojis there on that one, but we'll see how the LCK wants to respond yeah, here. Yeah, what? What? Uh, I don't really that... know what the LPL is doing. What? The Malzahar will find out. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. Oh! oh. Yes, Let's crank. Okay, we still yes. get to see the Mad Life. Stepping up. All right. Is so... Uzi playing Nico? No. Because that could be a thing. No. Oh. Yeah, that that's the most logical. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you're acting as if any of the choices now are logical. It is like Aatrox jungle, Malzahar mid. Wait, is <laughs> Faker on Zach? That's a smite on Faker right now. No. That he has a smite. <laughs> he does have those things, and he has a Zach. Mid lane <laughs> ballistic <laughs> missile AP Zach. Yeah. All right, Maybe. rookie is rookie on Malzahar and Faker on Zach. Was this part of the plan, Jen? Uh, <laughs> so somehow I called the Nico bot lane, but not the Zach. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so I, I'll be honest. I was okay. expecting. Uh, I was expecting different. I was not expecting yeah. this draft. I was not expecting. Okay, so I got, I got messed up there by the player's sleds. They're not quite oh, up. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. I was about to yeah. ask about I, I saw Karma Jungle Rengar bottom. I was like, hold up a second. Is yeah. this actually Wait a than minute. we thought it was? But I don't believe it is. I think All they right. had them traded around the way that we expected them to be traded. But yeah, Zach mid. I feel like the one problem you've got there up against Malzahar is how do you ever pop the shield? Because you you got to be maxing the elastic slingshot, and then you just slingshot on, 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 on the on a low cooldown. Well, yeah, it's also on like a yeah. 75 range. <laughs> Don't worry, Malzahar. Let me just walk up here and throw some goop on you. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, let's say it's a learning experience for us all. Um, I feel like we're definitely going to learn a lot with Faker on Zach, a new champion to add to his extremely deep mid lane repertoire. So we also do have to remember that the Monster Hunter debuff is gone. So... Yes. Yeah, Smite that's what it is. Smite mids have kind of started to come back. Aatrox was the most prevalent one. In fact... Talon and uh, Nocturne, too. The, the jungle timing of Raptors and Wolves moved back by like a second or two to make it more difficult yeah. for soul laners to start there. I have yet to see the mid lane Zach, but there is a first time for everything. Yeah, we'll see if Faker can pull that off and... You all know at home, if he does, preseason solo queue is going to become that much more for fun. Watch it As be it'll great. be locked in every oh, they single see game. Wait, but I'm not sure if pings have come down. Did they see them walk into the pit? Well, we have as much I knowledge I don't believe so. I love it when the observers do this. Like, did, is the LPL yeah. on the Oh, Penis going to face check. Okay. Ooh, never mind. No, he's not. So they've seen him on XG. That's all they got. All right. Ooh, that could have been way more than it was. That could have definitely been very different. Uh, all right, so Korea now setting up in the brush. Oh, they're going to camp it. They're just going to wait for him to leash and then give him a very rude awakening. Yeah. Well, they're they are not leashing. So no, even no, though they not. made the jungle timer changes, Aatrox starting at Raptors is actually pretty common. Faker might try and steal it, though. Oh, he's going to Get in there, Faker. Oh, Faker's ready to go. Gets up. He's got that smite ready to fire. They're taking everything. Oh, oh. MLXG denies it, though. Meanwhile, Peanut will take away the enemy but red buff. Peanut's gonna walk away with the red. You can like G slow down, jump at him a little bit, find another Bola, find some more damage. <laughs> Peanut is going crazy. <laughs> leap after leap after leap. Peanut chunks and like she out of the jungle. He's not gonna go back to base though. Still only level one. Now the level one gang mid. Oh no, he's got no need to go back to base. He's looking <laughs> to cause some trouble here. Stab that minute. I mean, at this point, Faker should just go kill the Scuttle Crab. Like, he's not going to do anything in lane <laughs> against the Malzar who's just going to shove him in. Would either of you have ever predicted that Rookie versus Faker would be Malzahar Zach? Zach with Smite. 
Don't don't undersell <laughs> this, Vettius. It's not just Zach. It's Zach with Smite. This is the world final that the fans were waiting for. What well, so far? Unsurprisingly, Rookie has the advantage in the mid lane. Uh, maybe that'll change as the laning phase progresses. As we said, this is a big learning experience for us all. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is what the uh, the salty LCK fans during Worlds were like, oh, everybody just did the best because Faker wasn't there. SKT wasn't at Worlds. This is what they were talking about. The smite mid lane Ooh. back as the pull goes over the wall. Mad Life looking to set things up here, but the LPL will get themselves away. Ignite dropped down to the MLXG, but he's still getting out of that trouble for now. Peanut making a return visit here to the mid lane, but Rookie keeps himself out until that empowered Bola lands. Takes a bit of extra damage, very low on mana. Does walk right back towards his turret, but he takes the shortcut, which puts him in a little bit of danger. MLXG nearby means they won't be able to chase him any further for now. Peanut still looking to continue this one. Wants to get an empowered Bola if he can. Won't quite get it just yet. We'll throw that second one there onto Faker. Oh, not on to Faker, yeah. on to Rookie as Faker walks up, trying to get the stretching strike. There's nowhere to slam his opponent. Anymore. Man, when you think of 2v2 strength, Rengar Zank definitely up there in the tier list, really bullying out no? the Malzahar <laughs> and the Aatrox uh, in the early levels. Yeah, that's, what, that's what I always think about in my tier list. Yeah. Rengar Zank, where are they going to fall? I'm not sold. I feel, no? like, uh, <laughs> I feel like they could use a little bit uh, more range. I mean, to be fair, we can see. Ooh, good hook. Ooh, Mad Life doing what Mad life does one more turret shot would have sealed the deal but uzi gets himself out thanks to the lantern and we've been so distracted by the mid lane is that like okay no he's fine uh we've been so distracted by the mid lane matchup we completely forgot to talk about the fact that uzi is in fact playing eco yeah uh, down towards the bot lane now while you can mimic other champions on your team there are no other ad carries so we can't take advantage of their auto attack style or anything. He's playing a brand new champion. Uh, and he is struggling a little bit during the lane. Whoa, Ooh, MLXG. Gonna make this one go down. And there you go, decimating smash. His first blood for the LPL, but it's a one for one as the turret helps watch even it out. Yeah, getting one back as well. So not a huge advantage there uh, for the LPL team. Also got to call out the Kleptomancy Karma. That was another change that can be done. You can actually get two procs after a spell use. So trying to take advantage of that in a range versus melee matchup. Eventually should be able to power up the Kai'Sa in the late game if that's what he decides to go. So let's watch this game one more time. So watch, he flashes very early to avoid the initial knockup yep. from MLXG. And fortunately, uh, the increased damage from towers means that he is able to get a return kill. And <laughs> he's very happy about that. And one versus two to be able to get something back, definitely a big advantage for him. Still very even across the board for the time being. It's like, uh, he will get pushed back by Rookie in the 1v1. Well, no, the Malefic Visions plus the Space Crabs. Doing a lot of damage here down to Faker. Silence coming through. Faker does still have the pass. Nice. He'll try to go further after Rookie, but he's likely going to be forced into the boss. <laughs> right here, flashing away, but... Oh, boy. Now MLXG has showed up, and those Wobblets are in for a world of hurt. That's some AoE, and that's the dunk. MLXG makes it two for one. If that doesn't confirm Rookie greater than Faker, I don't know what will, really. Yeah. Straight up outplayed him in the 1v1. Yeah, MLXG yep. came up to clean up at the end, but really, just a straight up solid outplay from Rookie against the uh, former world champion in Faker. Right. When the former world champ goes up against the current world champ, I mean... What are you going to expect? Tomatoes, tomatoes, you know? <laughs> Fresh hook. Going to go a little bit wide there. Mad Life won't be caught out by that one. He knows the tricks of these hook champions all too well. But now the flash play. and the play. Ooh. Looks like Bang might not be quite as ready for that one. Does get himself away, but has to pop two summoner spells to do it. And we do see MLXG coming towards the bot side of the map. But Peanut making a kind of gank up top. Let's see if he can stop Ooh. this in time. Will not be able to. Godlike does manage to grab himself one kill, but Peanut should be able to clean this one up. No real issue does manage to get that one, and it is one for one, Rookie. but there's assist money over to the side of the LPL, as now Mad Life Ooh. does get taken down, but that's one for one as well. This game is just back and forth, gentlemen. That yeah. was a good hook as well from Mad Life to uh, kill Secure down towards the bot side of the map. Yeah, and you can see even that Rome not getting too much out of it. Does Faker still have Elastic Slingshot? Does it matter? Uh, I don't think it matters. What I will say is I do like the Tiamat start uh, at a godlike scion in the top lane, I think uh, it can be better than a lot of the tank builds because of how much wave clear you get when you have a little bit of AD uh, plus a Q. It's generally an auto attack and a Q, and you're clearing pretty much the entire wave. So that should be able to neutralize and get rid of some of the poke in the top. 
<laughs> we're in for a game. All right. I mean, that's popping the ulti, but he's not going to get much out of it. He's trying to maintain control over this area so they can continue to monopolize the chicken camps. When you're running two smites, chicken monopoly is the name of the game. Baker does make sure he gets that one with the smite this time. Won't end up losing it like he did at level one. Meanwhile, top side is Watch versus Godlike into that 1v1 yet again. Nice slam damage coming in from Godlike, but Watch returns a little bit there on the end with that inner point. Just a bit of trading back and forth up towards the top side of the map. Watch now finally hitting level seven. Looks like he's working towards the Rod of Ages. Uh, we'll give him that stacking health. Emily she yet to hit level six, but feels confident that they can make a gank happen up top lane. Ah, uh, who Ooh. needs level six when you're able to get a couple of back-to-back knockups into the chains, into the pains, and there goes Watch. Emily G grabs himself a kill, and there's no return kill. No, not this time, because Godlike has done a great job of actually getting full charge Qs onto the Karma, which you don't expect to be able to happen in the top lane, but it's because he's getting really good pass-throughs on his E. And I also feel like it's because Watch is greeting his Kleptomancy a little bit too much. Uh, that happens a lot when you're trying to get as much as possible out of it, getting into auto attack range. It's lining him perfectly up for Godlike's Decimating Smashes, and he's paying the price. All right, we're seeing the LCK team trying to set up something here in the bottom lane in that brush. Mad Life using the sweeper just to make sure there's nothing there in those lane bushes. But it looks like Peanut has been sniffed out here by the side of the LPL. They know that something's going on. They don't want to walk out any further into this trap, but Peanut decides to stick around just a little bit longer. Wants to really invest down here in this bottom lane. Let's see if Mad Life can grab the hook. Not going to go for it just yet. Uzi's still walking up a little bit further. Void Seeker fired off, but that won't do a whole lot just yet. And Peanut's already gone, so the play's called off. You know, and Uzi is actually sitting in a CS advantage in this two versus two for the time being, demonstrating once again that regardless of the matchup, he still knows how to farm. The guy is very talented in that particular department, and so far, he's sitting in a pretty healthy position. I think the most surprising part of that sentence for me is the fact that you said 2v2, because normally when it's an Uzi lane, it's never fair number. <laughs> Uzi's used to having everybody on the team. Yes, Mr. Uzi, no problem, Mr. Uzi. Be right there, Mr. Uzi. So far, he's been left to his own devices, but it is going pretty well here for him. The LPL team currently up about 500 gold. You can see the most notable bounty on the map right now is MLXG with that yeah. 450 spree. 2-0-2 two, two on the Aatrox. Warrior already completed on him there in the jungle. As Mad Life threads another one. And just to grab that pull down onto Uzi, who gets himself away again thanks to the Lantern. Looks like the LPL won't find much of a counterattack just yet. They're still happy farming up. Yeah, still a big trade win if they want to decide to make something move down to the bot lane, though. This is going to be a tough game. Oh, Faker goes in, but he's going to be suppressed immediately. And since Rookie Ooh. thrown back towards enemy territory, taken down now as we're going to see Peanut get himself away. Faker, though, does fall in the return as Uzi in the bottom lane looking to find himself his first kill of the game. Oh. And grabs the kill onto the fresh instead. It's going to be one for one so far. Mad Life wants to escape, but the damage continues to come out. And Uzi will show you exactly what Nico made of a double kill over to the LPL while mid lane it's MLXG cleaning up Peanut and getting himself out with the ulti. MLXG and Uzi making some big plays in the game here and that's the level six power I think of Nico. Can't wait to see that one in a replay because the ultimate does 250 base damage at rank one. Especially uh, I want to see if he came into its stealth beginning but they are dueling up in the top lane as well. Back and forth and back and forth. And I guess when it turns out, you take two players from the team that won almost everything this year except for Worlds and put them on the same squad, they're going to make some moves. They certainly look like it. Now three members of the LPL making their way towards the mid lane. Jizu. Oh, just a little bit. Good The very quick channel to give just enough movement to get away from any potential fresh hook. No one, the mouse, our ultimate still down. Faker with the Citro Hulk mid lane, Zach. The fact that he's only down nine CS is actually yeah. really impressive. That's super impressive. I was about to point out the same thing myself, because every time we look at him, he's just getting blasted with Malefic Visions yeah. and Spacecraft and all these other awful Malzahar harassment tools, but he's hanging in there. So my favorite thing about this uh, is we may see some action happening mid. No, everyone's just going to disengage for now. Ooh, saying that, Mad Life, the ulti is available for Rookie. Mad Life says, nope, I'm getting out of here. Got the blast going, getting himself away. As Wookie decides to drop the ulti on the Faker here in the mid lane. Suppression going to put plenty of damage down, but Faker will still get himself out. Tiny. Oh, Emil G, though. Nah, not willing to run through the two turrets. But my favorite thing about this is one of the most common statements I heard throughout Worlds from fans, analysts, pretty much everyone was, imagine Faker on this meta. 
imagine with Irelia, Akali, Aatrox, all Zach. these huge carries, yeah. and he goes <laughs> Zack Smite in the mid lane. <laughs> I just... And uh, while we were talking about it, he unfortunately yeah. loses the yeah. passive and his life yet again in the mid lane. Somebody spills a big old pile of green goop on the floor, and yep. Faker's screen is black and white for the next 15 seconds, but LCK down about, what is that, 3,000 gold now? So not quite where they want to be, but we'll see if maybe Mad Life can make a play in the bottom lane. Meanwhile, the LPL grabbing the first turret here no. in mid lane at the same time. Stun down onto Mad Life, going to be taking him very low. Uzi grabbed the first kill, as we're going to see Jizo try to get himself away from that retaliation. He will do so. Uzi makes a double rookie, still looking to maybe make this one a triple. Bang Force to continue running out as MLXG spreads his wings and makes his way into the bottom lane. This should be a three for zero for the LPL. And they might be running away from this one. The start of that fight, Thresh hooked Rengar out of his ultimate. So a perfect start. <laughs> then while they're CC'd, Uzi hops up into the air, lands the double sun off his ult. They absolutely destroy the bot lane in that exchange. Yeah, the LPL looking to continue this year's trend of shutting down the LCK. And so far, they are at a huge deficit. Five and a half thousand gold. Fake will do what he can to steal away this red buff. But uh, MLXG has no idea that this is going on right now. He will be spotted down in the jungle, though. And we've got double Dorian's rings with completed loot and echoes on both of the mages on the side yep. of the LPL. So the burst is that much scarier than it otherwise even would be. You do have your Storm Razor down for Bang, so it's not like he's completely irrelevant, but he is not nearly as impactful as that Nico is. Take another look how the bot lane fight started. Yeah, check this out. So obviously Mad Life's trying to make it engage. Watch the fresh hook though. Boom! Right there. Uzi's already channeling his ultimate. It's actually a three-man. Perfect Nico play as they counter the gank. Uh, with Rookie, and then easily MLXG through the down mid lane turret, cuts off Bang at the end. So my favorite thing about that hook was... I think yeah. it was aimed at Uzi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now we see the collapse in the bot lane. All right, it's three versus two. Can Uzi manage Ooh. to outplay this one? A very nice amount of damage coming out from that ultimate. Uzi still barely getting himself away from this one, returning plenty of firepower in the meantime. Comes MLXG. Uzo trying to keep himself in a decent enough spot to provide some support, but the counterattack has shown up. It's the LPL now looking to go back onto the offensive. It's Uzi going unstoppable. Finally shut down, but it's still going to be a one for two. Ooh. Make it a two for two. That's plenty of bounty gold going over to the side of the LP as the LCK. LPL seeing if maybe they can get their mid laner out of here. It looks like Faker can't really move in and stop him. Not quite a lot of damage on Cinder Hulk stack. So Bang picked up a lot of shutdown gold there, which is great for him. Now Faker going in for the 1v1. Making Rookie down to about one third HP. Here Rookie him. returning plenty of damage. And yeah, Rookie Faker. is likely gonna lose this one. The shutdown <laughs> over to Faker with the solo kill. Whenever Zach is 0-3-1 and hits level 11, you got him right where you want him. him. You got him right where you want him. Spike yeah. right there. Damn, Faker. <laughs> Showing he still got it. Still got the moves. <laughs> oh, but here comes the sign. Oh, yeah, he's. Ooh, he could be in some trouble now. Mad Life and Faker in the mid lane, but he's uh, on his way. Faker decides to get the hell out of town. He wants to just take that slingshot all the way out, and of course, with it being level five, that means you can go real far. Yeah, he's going Zerat Scion as well with the Titanic Hydra. So, uh, at a certain point of this game, he may be focusing on turrets. We shall see. Ah, the strategically minded oh. Scion. Ah. Yes. Yes. That is a precursor. <laughs> I mean, so far, his landing phase has been very dominant. Yeah. A lot of jungle support. That's the thing. You can be strategically minded and have a good landing phase. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's missed uh, often with the strategy. You don't just have to be strategically minded as soon as the minions spawn. You are allowed to play League of Legends. That's where the strategy Normally. comes in. I get it now. Yeah, oh, it's all adding up. Big thing. <laughs> All right, Godlike will be looking to take down that Rift Herald, which does go along the lines of that strategy we have just been talking about. So securing that means more tools in the pocket of the LPL. LCK, you got to strike back. Let's see what they're working with. We got the Rod of Ages, almost the Iceborne Gauntlet done on the Karma. 
Rengar's got the Tiamat, he's got the Warrior, no lethality or anything on him. A lot of times you see Rengar's rush like Dust Blades or something just for the insta-give, but not this time around. So yeah. the top lane tank karma build is basically high CDR and just uh, a huge survivability. Uh, things like Spirit Massage are also really good in terms of the build, just because it gives you loads of kite power, it gives you loads of sustain, and you can just slowly chip away at pretty much anyone. I've even seen Karmas like outplay 1v3s. Huh. There is Baker's on the side here, thinking about maybe coming in for the flank. And Alex G does have the Ghost Blade already completed on this Aatrox, while Uzi, along with the suppression from Rookie for the setup, just gonna delete Bang right off the of Summoner's Rift. Peanut wants to go in. Baker's gonna be mostly disengaged there by the Thresh. MLX G taking down Mad Life in the back. They'll find the kill onto Peanut here as well. Baker tries to hold him off, but what can alone Zach do? He can flash away and stay alive, but that is about it. TP coming in, and it's a five man push from the LPL in the bottom lane. The LPL looking extremely dominant as they look to break the base of the LCK. The Rift Herald has now been oh, spawned. Are they going for it? Oh, here we go. Shelly charging in, turret taken down. Important to note that Rookie was also executed by a turret during this push. So, Drop portal down. let's see Get if back. they can find anything else. Nope, all right. Shelly just takes down the inhibitor. They decide there's nothing else to push for. It's 18 minutes into the game and the LPL squad has 19 kills. Let's take a look at how that happened tier two in this Acer Predator replay. Yeah, you can see Uzi disguised as a giant scion. KR already outmanned, basically one shot as he pops out uh, with the Mauser Halt as well. And Faker just kind of desperately tries to engage. Great play by Cash yeah, really as good. well as MLX team just diving mad life. Here we go, mid lane. Wow, mid lane. Let's see if the LCK can strike back here. They go for the Scion. Not really the guy that you want to try to make those moves on. Will manage to scream cowards as he runs away. And we'll see if Godlike can continue to evade this pressure. Faker gonna be taken oh. very low. Does get thrown into the blob. Let's get Ooh. survived. Uzi goes on a killing spree. Mad Life already down. Faker's gonna follow a double kill over to Uzi. As now more pressure being applied to the LCK representative. Peanut gets locked down by the suppression. And the death stare will send him down. It was Watch, actually, not even Peanut, who's invisible off to the side, trying to make some sort of a counterattack. Uh, only takes down the blue buff instead. I mean, trading your trading three one guy for three is pretty bad, but one guy uh, for three and a blue buff. Uh, that's yeah, probably just, yeah. No, <laughs> I don't want to see that. No, that's the line right there, yeah. Flowers. Uh, but the LPL are just dismantling the LCK they right really now. Are. I was not expecting uh, this Nico Thresh bot lane to do as well as they did, especially against Bang and Mad Life. But yeah, nine one and four right now is the scoreline for Uzi. And, He's having a very impressive performance as LCK tried to go for a fight. Uzi's still popping off all game. And I mean, let's not discredit MLXG either. Who's 7 1 and 5 here on the Aatrox. LCK coming in, looking to make the move. Rookie already going to be taken down now as Watch, the second one to fall here in the team fight. Uzi going in with some big old damage. He's unstoppable. Taking down Mad Life. We'll see if they can find anything Ooh. else here. Gizo keeping himself alive for the moment, but Faker grabs the kill onto him. MLXG behind a couple of turrets here, looking to go after Bang. Won't quite find it. Still keeps himself alive here, too. Uzi looking to hang around, make that sort of an outplay. They'll lose their jungler, and now Uzi stands with his Scion next to him, but no one else. Peanut tries to remove some of the minions, make it harder for the LPL to escape, but Uzi goes dominating. He'll take down Bang before he falls, and now it's godlike responsibility to try to get himself out. He'll make the ulti go towards the top side, but now he just has to walk it down top. <laughs> Baker will try to stop this. Scion shouldn't have enough damage to do a whole lot to him. Peanut coming in now as well. Karma shield goes through. Damage comes down. Peanut gets the hell out of town because he knows he might just die if he doesn't. And Godlike will finally fall. Faker picking up three kills in that fight right there. And a lot of large bounties going over uh, to the LCK. I want to call out Uzi has had some really good Nico ultimates as far as being able to counter the engages of the LCK so much. But they're, they're, they're struggling in this one, Betty. Yeah, they are uh, just a bit. Uh, I've been uh, really enjoying the way in which you can utilize the Nico E into Q. The setup that it provides, combined with yeah. the amount of poke that you have, is is really, really strong. And Yuzi just seems to be utilizing it very effectively. Faker now hitting level 14 on the Zac. I feel like this is where we really start to see the mid lane Zac come into its own. A uh, couple of items have been completed. He's even got the stone plate. Baron being kicked off. This could be the opportunity oh. for LCK to find the steal. Yeah, it, with two smites and a Zac as well yeah, to get yeah. to the pit. Like, this is a very real chance that this game 
uh, getting a little crazy. They know they're in there. Faker used you, but they still have the Blast Cone. If they both go in together... Yeah, it's still only about a half HP. Yeah, they're disengaging. The LPL recognizes the throw condition there. They decide to back away from that one. And honestly, Faker Zach, we already complimented him earlier for only being slightly behind in farm, as the minions will take down the Nexus turret on the side of the LCK. Let's see what MLXG can do here. Mad Life gonna get himself away from the hook, coming out from the Thresh. MLXG take him down below half HP now as well. But we are trying to disengage this one if they can. MLXG filling up He's that blood well rather Nexus. rapidly. But it's on to the Nexus for the side of LPL. LCK needs to get themselves back there and get there quickly. Peanut will They're go going down. For watch. Jizo <laughs> grabs himself the kill. It's Bang getting one on to MLXG in return. But Watch will fall to Uzi. Let's see, LPL, can you end it right here? It's still going to be a four versus three. Bang tries to keep himself alive, makes some sort of an outplay. He doesn't quite have the damage. Oh. The hook is down, the damage is out, and the LCK is out of there. The final kill of the game on to Faker himself. It's an ace for the LPL, and they'll win the game off of that one. You got to see the bot lane, Nico. You got to see MLXG playing aggressive, Aftershock Aatrox. You even got to see some top lane Scion action. And with the mid beating. lane Zach <laughs> action. A with the second highest the farm in the game. Wow. Second highest farm in the game behind Uzi, which doesn't even count because he always has the highest farm. <laughs> That's pretty much first highest farm I in the game. I think this sets the expectations of 2019 for Faker. You know, I think it's a clear <laughs> indication of the direction You're gonna have so many heading. angry messages from fans <laughs> for that statement. Can you imagine they bring in all of these big time players and then Faker's like, you know what? <laughs> I think Zach is really good. Yeah. Guys, yeah. I've had a good Ram run. It's mid. about time. Let's just... Let's yeah, Ram is mid. The minions will kill themselves on my shell. Yes, I can farm for there. free. Uh, but yeah, want to give a big shout out to uh, Jizu as well. His thresh was great. Oh, he yeah. had a lot of good interrupts, landing the hook onto the invisible Rengar, clearly intentional. Uh, and then multiple flays interrupting the Zackle uh, ease as well. So I think that he really uh, put man life in his place. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about the... Mad life in his place. Mad life's like, yeah, <laughs> hooks, what? I was like, randomly. Yeah, yeah Mad, uh, Mad Life was actually like threading gone. the needle really yeah, well. He too. had a good game too. Uh, but you, you know, you got to throw it out there. I mean, he took Thresh from Mad Life. You got to yeah. make a statement if you're going to do and that. Like, I absolutely yeah, agree. So, I do yeah. agree. If you pick Mad Life against Thresh and then you just run it down. Mad Life against that's, Thresh? That's, <laughs> if you pick Thresh against Thresh, <laughs> they're actually so interchangeable. Yeah. I entertained them. <laughs> totally intended. If you pick Thresh against Mad Life and then just run it down, people are going to be giving you some thinking emojis. But that kind of play, mm -mm, nothing but fire. Yeah. Yeah, and even those two supports, no longer current pro players, right? Yeah, like true. Mad Life retired. We also know Drew did some health issues. Thresh retired as well, but they didn't necessarily show it in that game. Obviously, they're having some fun, Faker yeah, sure. on yeah. Zach, but still good team fighting and high-quality gameplay throughout. Yeah, it was a lot of fun to watch, which is what I wanted it to be, right? And even though they were behind for the entirety of the game, the LCK, they still managed to find a couple of strikes back. Like yeah. you said, Faker grabbing the three kills in their base during that one fight towards the end. It was a good time, but for more on the victory, let's go ahead and send it over to Dash for a breakdown for the MasterCard VIP Lounge. Thank you very much, gentlemen. That's right. We've been checking in all week to the MasterCard VIP lounge to see what's been going on with the influencers and the pros. I figure, hey, one more time on the final. What, what do you mean? Well, I've been in here all week. Didn't you just see the camera? Right, it just went right by in the lights. I mean, look, I got a microphone in my hand and the, and the whole IFB thing. I, what, what is he doing in there? What? I mean, look, look at this guy. <laughs> I mean, ch check this guy's credentials. I, I, I mean, he looks a lot like me. I can believe that you would have mistaken him for me, but, but I, I'm the real Dash. This guy doesn't belong in here. Can I get some help? Can anyone here vouch for me? No, I'm being, look, I'm being completely stonewalled. Look, I see you, I see you looking right back at me. Tell this guy who I am. No, no help, nobody? Uh, uh, look, all right, I'll tell you what. No, not even that. Oh my goodness. All right, well, I tell you what, guys, look. I'm going to throw it back to you, Sharks, at the desk while I figure this out. I'm telling you this much. I'm getting into that party. <laughs> oh, my, oh my God. God. I cannot <laughs> believe it. I think we should team up against Dark Dash. What, what do you guys think? I nerve mean, on that guy. I'm on Dark Dash's side. He, what? He was an Get off my desk. He was an absolute chat out there. I'm not going to lie. Okay, he has a little okay, bit more okay. personality. I like that. Then who? Who are you calling out? Real Dash. I'm saying I like Dark Dash's personality just a little bit. <sighs> okay. 
Listen, we, we, we'll talk about that later. Uh, I, I, I'm in Dash's camp. But first, let's also talk about what we just saw on the Rift. Uh, LPL continuing their streak of beating absolutely anyone, and in particular, Korea this year, by also winning this one. Look, they try harded. Jieto is a main th Thresh support. He retired at the height of his career, and then they just ran through the bot side with their Nico pick. It was a lockdown comp. It was crazy. Now, I, I think that Uzi actually hates losing. He, <laughs> I, I've seen him try out in, in every single yes. game mode. I, was, I felt sad because after he lost, I've never seen somebody look so angry. So maybe he told his entire team to pick their best champs. Yeah, maybe. It did look like they had a really strong comp. I always feel that about Uzi. It's like people expect so much from him all the time that he just always, now he picks Nico again. So uh, Tyler, after a lot of Nikos this weekend, and, and most of what we've seen of her in the competitive scene. What is your verdict? Listen, if I queue up for solo queue and I start seeing this champion bot lane like he just played it, hey, we might be playing another game. <laughs> oh, damn. Well, it means you're not good enough to beat it, or? Well, I mean, or the champion is just <laughs> no, 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 completely no, definitely, broken. Definitely option number two. Uh, no, uh, in any case, I also love the fact that uh, once we say uh, Uzi's tryharding, and then on the other side, you have Faker. He's like, yes, fun tournament. Fun game. I'm gonna pick Zach. <laughs> Look, so the gold funneling thing, they eliminated the the, the limitations during the preseason, so you can technically gold funnel. It's like, okay, now you can help <laughs> out the uh, Rengar a little bit, except they were just leaving him on an own on his island, and he was just running it down, so that was a little unfortunate. He yeah. did, Faker did 1v1 rookie when he was 0-3-1. Yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. Right. So uh, in the end, Really good. LPL won again, but they aren't in the 1v1 tournament anymore, though. Rookie is out. Faker is also out. Um, Uzi is also out. Who's left? Caps and Pabu are taking on each other in the final of the 1v1 tournament. Guys, give me your breakdown. What is going to happen? Oh, my God. I mean, the fact that Pabu got through Faker, double lift, Rookie, that in and of itself, that's a strong ass resume. Yeah. I'm I'm cheering for Pabu. Oh, yeah. Tyler, your professional opinion. Now, I I've talked to Caps a lot today uh, these this weekend. Uh, he's a really good kid. But he's from Europe. Um, <laughs> there we go. Pabu <laughs> is is he's not. And can I can I just stop you right there? I've been noticing that throughout the entire weekend of All-Star You've been just like dropping small little because you're from Europe, because it's Europe. What's up with that? Uh -oh. Listen, uh -oh. here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. And now, during the World Cup. Round one. Football? Fo uh, fo soccer, but <laughs> yes. Uh, I had a lot of people come in to flay me during that. Yeah. Because oh. the yeah. United States didn't make it. And honestly, since then, I've, I've had a... Uh, Slight uh, vengeance. Okay, yeah. Okay. Honest, listen, listen, Give me a listen. Okay, Rebuttal? I, I kind of get it because uh, during the World Cup, things get things get crazy. People get very hot headed. It's kind of like during Worlds for League of Legends. But can we call a truce? Yeah. Wait. Right. Oh, I yeah. said round one. I was hoping for. <laughs> okay, there we go. There we go. Cool. Wait, well, wait. I, I didn't make my pick. Caps or Pato? Yes. Official. Pato. <laughs> All right, then. Uh, yeah, uh, but we'll see. Uh, also, it's a best of three again. Uh, it does make the game a bit different, of course. We saw the bans changing. You know, okay, like in the last one, uh, Pabu saw, okay, now Rookie is banning the Akali, so maybe he goes for the Aurelia, then he banned the Aurelia, but he went for Akali. I kind of feel like Caps, you know, Pabu's in his head because it doesn't matter. Pabu doesn't have like a strategy or a plan while Caps is trying to figure it all out. What will mathematically work? What do you guys think? Yeah, Pabu, knowing him from the OPL, he just goes for a lot of carry picks options. Yeah. He will literally just change the next game just for the just for the hell of it. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm expecting here. I think they both did. Uh, we've seen Cavs play Yasuo, Aatrox. You're right, actually. We've seen the Fiora Olaf mm -hmm. from Pavo. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be exciting. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, Tyler, if you were in the 1v1 tournament, how far would you get? They want to have let me join because they would have known I would have won. Really? So. Draven only, or? I can play anything. That band, then you just run off the stage, you're like, screw I'm this. I'm better than that. Yeah, I know, I know. Okay. I'm sorry, we just made a truce, and I'm like, look, you're, you're coming out my life. life. All right, cool. Uh, well, uh, we are going to take a quick break in just a second, and then the 1v1 will be coming up. Also, there will be a very grand entrance. It will just be the most stressful event of these players' lives. It's not like Caps played a world final or anything. Uh, it is time for a break. Don't touch that browser. We will be right back with that 1v1 final. Oh, Ooh, and like G. Gonna make this one go down, and there you go. Decimating smash. Nice. 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 Nice.
Nice on. Down on to Madlock. Going to be taking him very low. Uzi grabbed the first kill. As we're going to see Jizo try to get himself away from that retaliation. He will want to go in. Baker's going to be mostly disengaged there by the Thresh. MLXG taking down Mad Life into the back. They're going to be taking oh. very low. Does get thrown into the blob. Let's get to survive. Uzi goes on a killing spree. Mad Life already down. Baker's going to follow a double kill over to Uzi. As now more pressure being applied. You end it right here. It's still going to be a four versus three. Bang tries to keep himself alive. Makes some sort of an outplay. He doesn't quite have the damage. Oh. The hook is down. The damage is out. And the LCK is out of there. Welcome back to Assist of the Week. During the final game of the 2018 Grand Finals, Invictus Gaming had Fnatic on the ropes. IG were circling around the outside of Fnatic's base, looking for a moment to strike. Ning and Bao Lan got tired of waiting and created their own opening, jumping into the enemy team causing chaos. With a solid ult from Rookie, IG decimated Fnatic and secured their spot as the 2018 World Champions. Never won before, but that will change today. The Crownless are finally king, and Invictus Gaming are your 2018 World Champions.